What adventures haven't been tasked with trudging through some deadly swamps at one point or another? Frodo and Samwise in the Dead Marshes, Artax and Atreyu in the Swamp of Sadness, and Wesley and Buttercup in the Fire Swamps. You get the idea. Now it's your turn to run your players through some deadly swamps, and I'm going to show you how to make these modular swamp tiles this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. You know I love reading all of your comments and suggestions, and one that I've got a lot of is how would you build some swamp tiles? Now, I've actually built quite a few of these, 20 or 30, and I based them off of Jeremy at Black Magic Crafts Pit Trap. Now, the cool thing about that is these tiles are poured right onto some flooring tiles, so it gives the illusion that the water is actually in the table or on your game mat. And you can place these in any orientation. You can separate them to have a large landmass in between the swamp tiles or push them together and have a big pool of water in the center of your table. So if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. So one of my main goals for this video is to have the tools and materials needed for it to be pretty readily available so you don't need a lot of special equipment to make these swamp tiles. What you're looking at here are some sample floor tiles that I got at a home renovation store. And I'm just using a framing square and an alpha knife to cut those to a four, four inch by three inch tile. Now for the island or the land portion of the swamp tiles, I'm gonna be using XPS foam, but you can use anything here. You can use Milliput, you can use a little bit of green stuff. You could even use Play-Doh if you wanted to. I just had some XPS obviously laying around. First thing that I saw, so that's what I'm using uh, to make my islands here. Now I cut that at a 90 degree angle because I'm going to have this section of the land portion of the swamp be in the corner of the tile. And I just drew the shape that I wanted for the land on the foam. And as you can see, I'm varying the direction of the X-Acto knife because I want to have a little bit of an overhang here so we can add some really cool root details here in just a few minutes. And don't worry about you know any of the exacto knife um, lines that you have in there that, that show the, the cut or whatever because you're just going to shave all those off. We're going to cover a lot of this up in some Vallejo thick mud in just a little bit. And again, there's a lot of other products you can use. You don't have to buy specifically that thick mud um, to cover this. But we'll get into that in just a minute. So shave this down to the size and shape that you want. For the back edge that's going to be up against the edge of the tile, I'm going to turn that into a rock face so that it fits nice. Again, if you want, you could taper this down all the way to the bottom and make it all grass or mud or whatever you'd like. Now I'm going to show you how to make two tiles in this video. Here's the second land uh, section for the other tile that I'm going to make. And I'm just hot gluing a thin piece of foam that I had laying around, obviously to a thicker one. Once it's glued down, I can then carve it and make the shapes kind of blend together. And you can coat this whole island in, in some sort of DOS clay or, or air dry clay or you know whatever you have laying around. A little bit of hot glue will stick these right to the tile and then you can go and texture these now you're going to want to texture them if you're going to just paint them up and you're happy with that if you're going to add some clay over them or thick mud you can skip the texturing portion of this uh, project now we're just adding a little bit of mod podge uh, to the foam and you could you know to avoid getting any of the Mod Podge on the tile, you could obviously paint these before you glue them down. But I'm just showing you how easy it is to remove the Mod Podge. It's really not an issue if you get some of the paint on the tile because really what you're doing is you're going to give it the illusion of that stone or the landmass going down into the depths of the water. So it's actually okay if you get some of the paint around the perimeter of your land. 
So you can see the colors, I've got them listed in the background. We're just giving this a quick paint job here to, for me anyway, to cover up and have a nice base coat. That way in case any of the area is left showing when I'm done uh, with my thick mud or anything like that, uh, you'll see brown and you're not gonna see black when we're done. All right, so just a nice quick highlight. I actually highlighted the uh, brown portion as well. And now we're gonna grab some Vallejo Game Wash. I was painting this up, I was giving the brown a wash, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna just do the stone in this too. It's a swamp, it's dirty, it's mucky. But I wasn't really happy with that look right there. It really took away all of the stonework look that I had just previously did. Not a big deal, take a Q-tip, and that will take off most of that. And it actually looked really nice at this point because a lot of the brown that was left in the crevices from the wash um, just looked really nice and natural. Now to bring back the illusion of stone, we're gonna do a dry brush of that pewter gray over everything and you'll be all set. All right, now this is a branch that I got on a hiking trip. What we're doing now is we're gonna make a stump for the swamp and I took this section of stick here, baked it in the oven for, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half, two hours at like 200, right around there, plus or minus. And um, you should be all set. You don't have to worry about growth or anything like that. We're gonna cover this in some glue anyway, here in just a minute. And all I did was just bust up the end because we didn't want a nice straight top like it was cut with an ax. We wanted it to look like it, the tree had maybe fallen over into the swamp. So all we do now to make sure that the bark stays on here is just take a little bit of 50-50 water and PVA glue and make sure you've soaked the entire thing. And what I like to do is place anything, whether it's glue, Mod Podge paint, right in front of my dehumidifier, that warm, dry air uh, really uh, cures the glue or dries the paint really quick and allows me to keep moving. So while that's drying, what I'm doing now is I grabbed a few pebbles from my yard, I painted them up gray, and I'll give them a little dry brush with a lighter gray here in just a minute. And we're gonna place these on the swamp tile. Now, they don't have to go on that landmass. Place some of these right on the actual tile itself, and they'll look really nice once we get the uh, five minute epoxy on the tile. So now we're just prepping the foam for our stump, and we're just gonna hot glue this right into place. And I didn't paint this stump. I'll show you in a little bit some other tiles that I made where I literally Mod Podged the wood and paint repainted it. But this looked really nice. It had some lichen on it already. And again, it was baked and it was had some glue, PVA glue wash over it. So that's gonna stay like that forever. And I think that looks really great. So now we're just poking a few holes in here to make inserting some more smaller twigs easy so they don't snap. And what we're gonna do is give the illusion of some roots sticking out from the edge of this hill, or edge of the, uh, the swamp uh, island, I guess. And that's just a little bit of tacky glue that I stuck those in there with, using the clay sculpting tool. Gotta get that in the video somehow. I'll just clean up some of the, uh, the glue. And now here's the Vallejo Thick Mud. I love using this stuff, it's a nice cover. This is an older batch. It's starting to get um, cure on me in the bottle a little bit. So I ended up using my finger for some of this, an old brush to kind of smear it all on there. And it really gives a nice texture to this swamp tile. All right, now that that's on there, I'm gonna do a little black wash over all the stones. I wanted to get a little bit more of the stone look and color out of these. And don't be afraid to get any of that black wash on that thick mud. Again, it's a swamp, so you know, have fun with washes and everything that you do in here. You can really be messy with it, and it's still gonna look really nice. All right, now for a little bit finer detail, I'm taking some sheet moss, and I'm gonna be sticking a few of these as some embellishments around the islands. If you're worried about, you know, the strength of these and, and how delicate it might be. Obviously you can skip this part. I've got a bunch of tiles that I don't have any of like the sheet moss on that I can just throw in a box. But it's nice like my HD dungeon tile video. 
to have a few HD swamp tiles as well that you can kind of mix in with the rest of your tiles. Now we're just throwing a few grass tufts in here. We'll uh, add a few more of the uh, sheet moss pieces. And I really do think they, they make these look really nice. And as you can see, I've got maybe 45 minutes into this build, literally, total time. And that thick mud is still soft, so I'm just adding a little bit more tacky glue, pressing it into the mud, and uh, keep moving. Now we're going to use some more tacky glue. We'll add some leaves to this island here that had the tree stump. And I've used super glue in the past to hold these down. Great option, but the thick mud was still, again, hadn't set yet, so I could really use that to my advantage with the tacky glue to help hold these in place and not worry about the super glue that would, you know, potentially turn white on me uh, once that cures. Now I'm just mixing up a few pigments, some black and some burnt umber, to make it darker brown, and we're gonna you know, basically just kind of coat the center of the landmass that might have a little bit of a drier consistency to the soil, leaving that mud along obviously the edge. And you can use all different color pigments here. You don't have to just use this one mixture that I had. I could then take, if I wanted to, some lighter browns, mix them in as well. Anything you can do to help vary the color uh, really will help increase you know the look overall look of the craft so right now what I'm doing is I'm taking some Agrax Earthshade and I'm just damping it in on top of the pigment and again as you can see I'm not worried about getting it on the thick mud as well now I'm using some Gorilla Epoxy 5 minute epoxy I can get 3 tiles per tube of this the tubes 5 bucks so I'm looking at roughly $1.50 per tile. It really isn't a bad option um, when you're looking at doing the liquid effect. You could obviously use a two-part resin as well that I've used in my other videos like an Envirotex Lite. But here again trying to keep it simple with items that you can find locally. And I just put a little Agrax Earth Shade in there, a little bit of leather brown paint by Vallejo and now we're just gonna pour it around the landmass. And it's gonna stay on the tile it's really cool this stuff doesn't run off the edge the only issue here with using the five minute epoxy is you guessed it you got five minutes or less to get this stuff where you want it before it sets on you and then uh, if it's not where you want it you're kind of in trouble so maybe practice uh, on a tile first before you have a set one like this dumping uh, your resin on it and just hold it in place and you can it's really kind of viscous you can move it around real nice for the first few minutes just keep an eye once it starts getting tacky and starts to pull on you it, at that point it's almost like you have seconds before it sets up so maybe even set a timer once you start mixing this to give you an idea of how long you have to work with it now once this is all set up we're gonna go back to the leaves we'll add a few more leaves up against the embankment here And you can take um, like a PVA glue and put it over the water, use a canned air or a airbrush uh, with, with just the air on the compressor to blow the PVA glue or a water texture effect around to give some ripples or some waves to the water. I've done that in my uh, modular tile, uh, river tile video. You can check that out, I'll put a link up above. But for this, I wanted it to be kind of stagnant, so I didn't do that. All I'm using is a little bit of the Vallejo water effect here to put a few ripples coming out from underneath this embankment to make it look like something's living under there. Something maybe might have just splashed some little creature. And the nice thing about these is they sit really nice and really flat so that when you have 10, 15 of these spread out on your game board, you can have them all separate or you can press them up right against each other in any different combination that you want and they fit really nice. Alright so here is my swamp tile that I made about over a year ago. This was the first rendition that led to this design right here. 
Now, whenever I make something, if I'm making it for a second time, I like to try and improve on anything that I could have in the first go around. So these I would still make a whole bunch of just like this. I would have made the uh, water a little bit darker like I did in this video. That way you don't see as much of the tile. But the land mass is made out of green stuff. I pressed a little bit of sand into it to give it some texture. The rocks from my yard as well as the stick. And I painted this stick up in this one where I didn't do it in this video. I thought it looked really cool uh, just like that. The nice thing about these tiles is that these really take a beating. Nothing's going to happen to them, right? And I made a ton of them. And you can just take all these tiles and you can just stack them all up in a box somewhere and you're good to go. You can see here I made one of the tiles where I added a little bit of some Vallejo water texture to get some ripple effect just to sample it. It came out okay, but I'm just a big fan of the still water look. Uh, for a swamp. Alright, so build yourself a bunch of these, build some nice HD swamp tiles as well, and you're going to be all set for your next swamp encounter. Okay, so now it's time for you to make your swamp tiles. And don't forget, you can add all sorts of embellishments into these. Snakes, rats, skulls. You can put some holes in the land masses and have something crawling out of it. Logs with moss on it and mushrooms. Leave a comment below and let me know what you might add to your swamp tiles. And also, don't forget, I made these 4x3 just to maximize the size, but you can make these in any shape you want. Also, if you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Head on over to Patreon, check that out. I've got four tiers there where you can pick from. One of them being The Coven, which is my private Facebook page, where you'll gain access to me and everybody else in The Coven. You'll get something, and you'll help me out in return to fund the channel, and I really appreciate it. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.